When I was growing up, I honestly never thought I'd be a software engineer. For those of you who are new here, hey, I'm Maddie. I'm a senior software engineer who previously worked at Google and internet companies, including Microsoft, Amazon, and IBM. Today, I wanted to keep it quite casual and chat about my journey in tech and how I ended up at Fang as a new grad and tips you can use to make that happen in 2025 for yourself if you're looking to break into tech. Before we dive deeper, I want to acknowledge the advent of AI, especially in the past couple of years. It's ridiculously fast how AI is changing everything in the field. And to be honest, Part of me is definitely scared, but at the same time, I think that in some ways, this is the most exciting era to be a software engineer. The stuff that we can create now is just insane. I really wish I had access to ChatGPT, Gemini, Llama, Claude, and other LLMs back in university to help me understand and build when I was learning the fundamentals of CS. It's crazy to see how Gemini has improved launch over launch from the inside, and being at Google for most of my career and seeing those iterations felt surreal. Other companies like OpenAI, Anthropic, and Nvidia have also been growing tremendously, so definitely keep your eyes out for those companies and others when you're applying. Today, let's rewind all the way back to high school Maddie. Back then, I didn't know what I wanted to major in, but I knew that it would be math or science of some sort. I was leaning toward becoming a biologist or a doctor. This was because I really liked learning about anatomy and botany, and I competed in a bunch of biology competitions. For example, I was the biology specialist for my school science team, and I made the semifinals of the USA Biology Olympiad. I also did a few internships one at a phytomediation lab at UC Berkeley, one at a neuroscience lab at UC Berkeley, and one as an R&D intern at a pharmaceutical company. In high school, I barely knew how to code. I took one class, AP Computer Science, but to be very honest, it was mostly just because I wanted to take as many AP or advanced placement classes as possible. That class taught me some Java basics, but I wasn't really inspired to try anything else. When I got to university, everything changed. When I started my undergrad at MIT, I realized that I didn't 100% want to do grad school or many years of medical school. Unfortunately, I knew that I would have had to do that in order to get a good job in the biology fields. So realizing this, I took a step back, did some soul searching, and then gave computer science a shot. Honestly, my initial reasons for trying my hand at computer science weren't really the best. All my friends were studying math or computer science or both. You know the saying, if all your friends jump off a bridge, would you? For me, the answer was yes, 100%. I wholeheartedly trust my friends and their judgments. I then was inspired to take my very first university university computer science class, intro to EECS. To be honest, that class almost made me decide not to major in computer science because it was that bad for me. Luckily for me, MIT is pass fail all classes first semester instead of letter grades, which saved me and my grades. Afterward, I did kind of a post-mortem and realized that it wasn't the computer science part that I really struggled with, it was instead the EE part. I can't do circuits to save my life. Realizing that coding was actually something that I enjoyed, I decided to stick it out and see how it went. Trying one more computer science class turned to two and three. I found that I really enjoyed programming and started building out some quite small personal projects for fun, took some algorithms courses, took more advanced courses, and actually ended up graduating early a semester, but that's a story for another video. As I went through university, I got more and more involved in computer science activities outside my classes, all of which gave me more confidence that I'd made the right choice. I did research at one of MIT's labs where I built Bayesian machine learning models to predict pulmonary disease in Southeast Asian populations. I also held a ZEC position in the machine intelligence community, which is now called AI at MIT, I think. Code for Good, which is a club that matches students with local nonprofits in Boston to build technical solutions pro bono. Code It, a club where students teach local high school girls how to code and was a Microsoft student partner, for which I helped run a few Microsoft Azure workshops. What I found the most refreshing was that MIT clubs are honestly not gatekeepy at all. Most of them welcome everyone as long as you have interest in the club's missions and their events. Besides clubs, I of course was also on that internship search grind. I ended up doing six total internships. The first internship is always the hardest to get, but trust me, having that experience and putting it on your resume opens doors to more opportunities in the future. Most of what I learned about software engineering came not from my classes, but from these practical hands-on experiences. Internships are a great way to tell if you will actually enjoy working in the industry as your career. During my first year at uni, I didn't end up getting my summer internship until quite late in the year around early spring, but I eventually ended up securing a mobile dev internship at a startup in San Francisco. It taught me a lot, not just about how to build quickly from scratch and be a dev in the industry, but also gave me a glimpse into the startup world. Once I had that first internship on my resume, I felt that it was easier to land my second year internship, which was at a mid-sized business analytics company in Boston. I found and applied to that company at one of the career fairs on campus. I remember handing out dozens of resumes and doing the on-campus interviews that some of the companies offered me afterward. At that company, I learned a lot about software development as well as how humid Boston can be in the 
summer. In my third year at university, I actually did two internships, a winter internship at Microsoft, as well as a summer internship at Morgan Stanley. I got my Microsoft internship where I worked on the Xamarin team in part because I'd C-sharp experience from the first internship as well as C-sharp and Unity based classes that I took for my humanities concentration at MIT, which was comparative media studies game design. It was my first big tech experience and I absolutely loved it. Morgan Stanley and other banks and fintech companies have full day final round interviews called super days. I liked the experience interning at Morgan Stanley, but I definitely remember thinking that this was a lot more formal and finance centric than any previous job experience I've had. My internship at Morgan Stanley was my first and probably only financial services job. This might be a hot take, but even though I had fun in New York City while interning at Morgan Stanley and learned a lot at the firm, I personally would not want to live there full time. It's a charming and unique city, but I am first and foremost a suburb girl and that's where my heart is. To be real, all I like to do for fun is run, play board games, and hang out with your friends, and you can do all of that away from the city. And last but not least, I entered my fourth year. I really had to think about where I wanted to work full time. I got a return offer from Morgan Stanley, but I ultimately decided not to take it. In addition to the qualms about New York City that I previously talked about, even though I really did enjoy my work at Morgan Stanley, they gave me an exploding offer with only two weeks to decide whether to take or reject the job. And because they extended that offer in August, that deadline would have come before recruiting season opened and I got other offers from other companies around October and November. Instead, I ground leak code. I interviewed a bunch, got some offers, and tried to make the most of my last year. Something that I don't think is talked about enough is that it's not just these companies figuring out if they want you, you also have to figure out if you want to work for these companies. Definitely use interviews as an opportunity to gauge culture fit and if you would be happy at the company. I ultimately decided that I wanted to rejoin big tech full-time as a new grad because of the learning opportunities, stability, culture, and support systems. I had a very interesting schedule where I interned at three different companies during and after my last year at MIT before starting at Google full-time. My last class ended December 2019 and in January of 2020, I interned again at Microsoft on the same team. To be honest, I really wanted to join that team full-time because I loved the work and the culture, but ultimately they did not have headcount and my Microsoft offer was for Seattle, which was less appealing for me because I didn't have any family or ties there and was not familiar with the team. I graduated officially with my bachelor's in computer science in February 2020. Next, I did a co-op at IBM where I actually commuted about two and a half hours a day to Littleton, Massachusetts from MIT for a month before, as we all know, the pandemic started in March 2020. And my commute immediately became 10 feet from my bed to my desk. During the summer of 2020, I interned completely virtually for Amazon where I was on the Alexa recommendations team. And finally, I started at Google as a new grad in August 2020 where I ended up on the health search team and then on the search ads team. I had an amazing time at Google. The people are so humble and genuinely nice and helpful and I learned a lot about how to be a software engineer for real. I also felt firsthand the immensely collaborative culture. In addition, it was just so cool to see the features that I built being shipped out to millions of people on Google search. Throughout this entire journey, I picked up some tips and things I wish I would have done in retrospect that I want to share with you today. So this brings me to the tips and advice I have for you when starting off your career in tech. When I first started learning computer science, honestly, I felt so behind. Some of my classmates had been coding since they were like 10, whereas I just learned how to write my first line of Java a year before. I was constantly worried that I was falling behind and it was so intimidating hearing friends talk about their FANG offers, AI research, or how they were already taking grad level courses as first or second year undergraduates. However, I learned to put this into perspective. Yes, there will always be people who know more and can code faster and can do lead code better than you. That's totally fine because at the end of the day, you only need one internship offer. And what really matters, especially as a student, isn't your GPA or how many advanced classes you've taken. It's your eagerness to learn, ask questions and grow on the job. Because I always fell behind, I didn't apply to any places as a first year uni student until February, which was much later than the typical internship recruiting season that is August through December. This brings me to my second tip, apply before you think you're ready. I kept on putting off my application because I felt like I hadn't taken enough CS classes yet. I didn't have any real projects on my resume. I needed to study more and more algorithms and data structures and so on and so forth. If I could give college Maddie one singular piece of advice, it would be this, apply ASAP and don't be disheartened by rejections. Yes, you will probably get a lot of rejections, but honestly, the more practice you get taking interviews, the better you'll become for future interviews, even if a lot of them don't result in job offers initially. If you're in university, an easy way to get your foot in the door is by going to any career fairs that your school might host in the fall. These are events where companies literally come to you. They set up booths, collect resumes, and sometimes even do on the spot interviews for internships or new grad roles. It's such a good opportunity to make connections, so be sure to become prepared by printing out a bunch of copies of your resume, doing a little homework ahead of time 
time to figure out which companies you actually want to talk to and prepping a quick elevator pitch about yourself. Just like a 30 second intro about who you are, what you're studying, any past experiences, and what you're looking for. When submitting applications online, sometimes the first hurdle is just getting people to respond to your applications, let alone passing the technical interviews. This is where getting referrals can really help you stand out, especially for big tech companies that get way too many applications. While I don't recommend that you cold ask random people on LinkedIn for referrals, definitely keep track of the people that you meet naturally and go to networking events if you can. I myself actually only asked for a few referrals when I was job searching as a new grad and no referrals this time around when I was searching for senior software engineering roles, but if I could do this over, I definitely would be much more proactive in reaching out to my friends and network for referrals. Obviously, asking for referrals doesn't mean that you're going to get the job if you can't pass the same technical coding challenges and interviews as everyone else. It just makes it more likely that your resume will get reviewed by an actual human instead of sitting unread in some applicant pool. When you start interview prepping and getting interview requests, I highly recommend investing in a LeetCode premium subscription. I didn't do this when I was a student to find my new grad and internship roles, but I did purchase one when I was job searching a few months ago and I found it really useful, especially in unlocking the company-wise questions. Not all tech companies ask LeetCode style coding questions, but a lot of them still do, even though I think that most people in the industry acknowledge by now that LeetCode isn't necessarily the best way to assess someone's skills as a dev. Until we all collectively come with a better way though, you still gotta go on that LeetCode grind. And that's all I have for you in this video. Thank you so much for watching and please feel free to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more software engineering resources and career tips. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one.